Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to the latest video and today's video well we're going to talk about something that I can't believe I haven't made a video about it before but we're going to talk about mistake proofing. Um, I happen to notice that Nowhere on my YouTube channel. Nowhere on my YouTube channel have I dis discussed uh, mistake proofing. So we're going to have a little we're going to have a little discussion today about that. We're going to talk about the principles of mistake proofing and how important they are to the principles of process control. Because if we look Let's go to process thinking. This is where, remember, this is where everything starts. This is where everything gets applied. Process thinking is the center of everything you apply. So if we go for your money making process, here it is. Here's your money making process. We have inputs. We have outputs. Okay, now then, let's apply mistake proofing now to this to this uh, diagram. So mistake proofing. It's a fantastic way of getting process control. One of the things you get, of course, is that when you're trying to control a process, you have operators and people and management and all sorts of things going on and and they want to interfere they want to change or sometimes they forget so to be fair to somebody if you give them 10 rules there's a good chance they'll only remember nine of them and they're doing a fantastic job they're remembering 90 percent of the 90 percent of the task that they have to concentrate on of course what's the one thing we'll criticize them for we'll criticize them for the one thing they forget so the idea of mistake proofing is to, is to make it so the operator doesn't have to remember. The, the process tells them what to do. Now, mistake proofing, we tend to think of mistake proofing in a, in a very digital way. We tend to think of complete prevention as a mistake proofing device. But that isn't the full story. So for example, in the United Kingdom, um, when you're putting a plug, an electric plug in the wall, we have a three pin plug system, which the shape is unique. And because the shape is unique, what you get is complete prevention of putting it in the wrong way around. Okay, so that complete prevention only happens on the input side. So there are three levels of mistake proofing that you can do. You can put a mistake proofing device here, you can put a mistake proofing device here, or you can put a mistake proofing device here. So let's talk about this. The one over here on the input side typically is complete complete prevention. And this is the one we tend to think about as a mistake proofing device. So as I mentioned, if you're dealing with something mechanical, maybe you have a unique shape. It can only go in one way. If you're dealing with something mechanical, maybe you have a common shape, so it can go in any way around. That would also be a mistake proofing technique. Um, we see them on websites. When you go into a website and it says, please give me your email address, your telephone number, and your address. If you fail to fill out one of the boxes, it won't let you proceed to the next page of the website. So it's a mistake proofing device, complete prevention. 
And this is the gold standard of mistake proofing. Complete prevention on the input side of the process. But then we move to level two mistake proofing. Now, level two mistake proofing is not complete prevention. What, what this does is it minimizes it minimizes the problem okay so it keeps your defects to a minimum if you are going to get an error in your system now the great example of this one would be an alarm on a temperature controller let's say on your process so you have a temperature which the process has to meet let's say it's a heat treatment process you have a temperature that the process has to meet and you put an alarm so that if it goes below that temperature you alarm the system out of course when the alarm goes off everything that's inside the system at that point might have to be reworked or everything in the system at that point might be rejectable but it's just that one batch that's rejectable what you don't do is you don't run the plant all day batch after batch after batch and then suddenly realize everything that you've made today is rejectable or reworkable so things like alarms and and that sort of thing they they are mistake proofing devices they don't prevent the problem but they minimize the error so minimize and then level three well level three is the sort of the minimum amount of mistake proofing you can do and effectively we don't think of it as mistake proofing it is effectively 100% inspection now we don't think that this is a mistake proofing device but here's the principle what you're doing is you're mistake proofing the system because you have process after process process A, process B process C. What we don't want to happen is the rejects from A to go all the way through the process and then eventually get rejected at the end when all the value and the cost has been put in by the system. What we want is there to be a gate here where we mistake proof the system so no fault. I know some of my clients have this acronym NFF no fault forward you don't pass the thing on to the next process and add lots of value before you eventually decide that it goes in the bin so there are the mistake proofing techniques complete prevention using shapes maybe alarms using web pages all kinds of mechanical and electrical uh, rules etc i'm not going to talk about the practical examples You'll think of these things yourself, not a problem. You, you will even see them in your factory. Complete prevention is the gold standard. Minimizing the mistake, alarms, etc., uh, are the classic example of minimizing the, minimizing the fault and making sure that you, you reject or rework a minimum amount of material. And then finally, if your process is a complete disaster, and you cannot guarantee the quality, then you have to go for this one, 100% inspection. But this is the worst level of mistake proofing you can do, and all you're really doing is keeping the mistakes on the section so that people can address them and deal with them and do some continuous improvement work. So mistake proofing, level one, level two, level three. Obviously, if we're here, this is where world-class process control lives. What you're what you're making sure it is you have rules and that they're followed and that's what world-class process control is process control is very simple you have a rule what does the rule do it simply fixes the inputs so as an example you have a speed and a feed what do you do? Well, you put it in a program, you feed the program into the machine, and you lock it down with a password. It's complete prevention. Nobody needs to know the password, by the way, because if, if, if the inputs are sitting under a password, what do you know hasn't changed? 
You know, the speed and the feed hasn't changed. If the speed and the feed hasn't changed, what do you know isn't your problem? The speed and the feed is not your problem. If it's not your problem, we're not going to change it. We're not going to make it a problem by coming up with new flipping rules. You pick a rule and you, you adhere to it. And that's it. And that's what mistake proofing devices help you to do. But in world class companies, these things, especially here, are everywhere in the company. They have a rule and they stick to it. And in fact, they enforce it by putting a mistake proofing device in place. So it can't be violated. And that is world class control. And mistake proofing devices are one of the centerpieces of world class companies.